Hello everyone, I wanted to give everyone a quick overview of what I tell every sponsee when I first start working with them through the 12 steps. It's my favorite part of the book. In the doctor's opinion, it says, men and women drink essentially because they like the effect produced by alcohol. We like it, it's simple. We like the effect produced by alcohol or drugs. We like it. It's not about, oh, my uncle, this, oh, when I was growing up, it was rough. Like, yeah, I had a rough childhood too, but that's not why I did it. The sensation is so elusive that while they admit it's injurious, they cannot after a time differentiate the truth from the false. So the sensation of drinking and using is so elusive you admit it's injurious. You admit it's ruining your life. You admit that it's causing hardship, that it's causing, you know, just everything that is negative in your life. You cannot, after a time, differentiate the truth from the false. You can't differentiate the true reality from the false reality. What's bad? What's good? Just it's the sensation so elusive, it tricks you. And then it goes on to say to them, their alcoholic life t seems to be the only normal one. This is my life. I smoke, I drink, this is, what, this is what I do. It's my only normal life. Since that sensation is so elusive and it's injuring you, but it's my normal life. This is what I do. They are restless, irritable, and discontented unless they can again experience the sense of ease and comfort which comes at once by taking a few drinks. So you're irritable, restless, and discontent until you find that solution, that 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 thing that makes you that makes you tick, that makes you go, that thing that makes you feel at peace, but it's not peace. So I bring him to page 24. The fact is that most alcoholics, for reasons yet obscure, have lost the power of choice and drink. And that's that injurious part. So we've lost the, the choice of drink. We admit it's injurious, but it's elusive, and we can't differentiate the truth from the false. Our so-called willpower, practically non, non-existent. Our willpower is just gone. And it's to, to us, our only alcoholic life seems to be the only normal one, like it talked about. So... Where'd our willpower go? It's just, this is life now. We are unable at certain times to bring into our consciousness with sufficient force the memory and the suffering and humiliation of even a week or a month ago. So we can't bring into our consciousness the suffering and, and humiliation of even a week or a month ago. That's that admitting it's injurious but can't differentiate the truth from the false. We are without defense against the first drink. And then I have them go to page 30. The idea that somehow, someday, he will control and enjoy his drinking is the great obsession of every abnormal drinker. The persistence of this illusion is astonishing. Many pursue it into the gates of insanity or death. So that's what keeps us in this cycle. While we admit it's injurious, even though it's our only life and it's our way of life, it seems to be the only normal one. It keeps us in that cycle because the, the idea that somehow, someday, he will control and enjoy his drinking is the great obsession of every abnormal drinker. The persistence of this illusion is astonishing like it said the injuriousness and just what it does to us many pursue it into the gates of insanity or death and if you get out of that cycle and you do these 12 steps for me only for my experience it will bring you that peace that fourth dimension that bill talks about where you're going to be in the present moment you're going to be at peace with who you are you're going to know in your spirit that you're doing right